I've always loved professional wrestling. There's something about it that is unique. That's Have a seat, man. Mark, tell me about the time when you were developing your character. I love this story about Vince McMahon, how he called you. I'll just <laughs> let you finish. So, uh, yeah, so this is, this is way back, probably before a lot of you were born, um, like 1990. I'm, uh, maybe even, no, it was actually, it was in 89. I'm, I'm, okay. So... <laughs> I was working for another company, and uh, they actually they actually told me they, I, I was going in to re renegotiate a contract, and they uh, they set me down, and um, they went, "Listen, hey, you're a good athlete, but no one's ever going to pay money to watch you wrestle." They said that to me. I was like, "Really? Wow. Okay. Well, that's that's all I needed that's to so hear." We'll see yep. you guys down the road. And yep. that was like a burning, that stuck with me. So I figured, all right. So I, I eventually get uh, a meeting with Vince, right? And I was like, okay, I'm going to walk in here. I'm going to blow him away. <clears throat> I'll get hired right on the spot, right? I'm, I'm thinking that. So I go, to, I go to Connecticut and I meet with Vince. And at the end of the meeting, he goes, well, we really don't have anything right now. He goes, maybe at the first of the year after, after WrestleMania, maybe we might have an opening. And I was just like, oh, wow. I'd already quit the other, you know, I'd already quit the other place. Yeah. So it's like that, I, I didn't figure that part in. Uh -huh. So anyway, so I'm just kind of, I'm hanging out, trying to, you know, get bookings where I can. And um, all of a sudden on, on, on it was WWF back then. Right. Um, so they, they start this promotion where they've got this giant egg on, on, one, of the, uh, on one of the stages. And, and at that point, I'd had, I'd had short hair, and I'd started growing my hair, and I'm thinking, an egg, right? So I started having this whole drama in my head, like, oh, man, he, he, I'm going to be Eggman or something like that, right? <laughs> I, I, you know, he's going to want me to shave my head and my eyebrows, and I'm going to, I was just like, I'm, I'm just in a panic, this had nothing to do with me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm at home one day, the phone rings, and uh, you know, back then, you know, you had to go pick it up. <laughs> Turned. <laughs> so uh, I picked the phone up, hello? Uh, is, this, is this The Undertaker? <laughs> so I put the phone down, I'm like. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, Undertaker? Well, that sure ain't. Eggman or Egghead, or, and I put the phone back up. I said, "Yeah, yeah, this is the Undertaker." Yeah, <laughs> and that's—I was—I had myself. I probably was on the verge of an ulcer. I was so uptight about this, and and when I got that, and it took me a second to process who it even was. Yes, you know, and you know, it's his voice is pretty. Uh, you know, it's you can distinguish it pretty quick. And I was like, "Yeah, okay." I, I no just clue. love how he was already in that mindset 
yeah. he's calling you the young. Yeah, he, the he had the character. He, he had the character. He just didn't, you know, he needed somebody big with no personality. And <laughs> yes, that's funny. All right, Mark. I'm your guy. Anyway, Mark, Mark, seriously, because uh, t- t- tell us a little bit about how that happened. So uh, obviously, uh, I've always, had, you know, I've, I've always knew and believed in God. I just didn't lead my life that way. Yes. Um, I've, I've never put a lot into being a celebrity. That uh, mm-hmm. I, I, that just kind of flies right over my head, you know, because uh, that's just not really who I am. Yes. You know. Um, but as you can imagine, you get exposed to a lot of different things, um, you know, because of what you do. And you know, I live I lived a, a pretty excessive lifestyle, um, and and I didn't have a you know I. I believe in God, but I wasn't living my life for God. Yes. And um, somehow or another, <laughs> I met the, uh, I, I even actually get a little choked up. Wow. She is, uh, she's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Thank you. I needed that. I needed that save right there. <laughs> I, was, I was about to lose my whole character. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> But uh, let me back up a little bit. Okay. So my wife, my wife actually worked with WWE too. Her name's her wrestling Michelle McCool. And uh, <laughs> all right now, easy. <laughs> so, so when she got there, there was two people that she didn't want to meet. Kane and yours truly. <laughs> Terrified. Did not want anything to do with me. Uh, <laughs> and it, it was funny because she has this unbelievable work, work ethic, you know. So she, was, she would get to the arenas early and try and get around, you know, some of the, the, our producers, our agents. That, and not in the sense that you would think agents, like not mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm going to make this deal for you. That's, they, they ran our, our non-televised events. So, but they were all really good hands and good wrestlers Mm -hmm. through their careers. And now they work behind the scenes. So she would pick their brains and, and, and and try and get them to get in the ring and work with her. And it it just caught my eye. Cause I, I, you know, I was like, no, you never, you never, you know, you never cross over that, that line. And uh, I always told guys, you don't, don't date people that you work with. And Mm -hmm. this is not going to work. I said it for years. And then I broke my own, my own motto, but but anyway, so I, got, I ended up getting to know her, and it, you know, I was just like, "Wow, she's really passionate about this." And mm-hmm. you could tell that she was genuinely. This is what she was wanting to do. It wasn't a stair step to Hollywood or anything else. This is this was this is her. You know, she was passionate, and um, so you know, finally, you know, after a long time of her chasing me around, I was like, <laughs> not true at all. <laughs> Finally, I, 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 you know, she realized that I was not Satan, and uh, yeah. <laughs> we, so we end, we ended up, you know, we, we ended up dating, and eventually she was living in Florida, and then she comes to Austin, and she started going to Lake Hills first, and uh, I was like, okay, go, yeah, you know, I'll be here when you get home, just, uh-huh. you know, go ahead and do your thing. So she says, would you please just, just go to come to church with me one time. I'm like, babe, look, I'm going to walk in there and the rafters are going to start shaking. And, uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I believe in God. I'm good. Just, I don't want to, you know, it's not, it's not going to work. But she, you know, she was very persistent and she, she wanted, you know, she wanted me to be the man that I could be. And, and that has nothing to do with being the undertaker. That's um, right. And so I went and uh, I was, I was, it was just the perfect circumstance at the, at the perfect time. She, she pushed me and I went reluctantly, but once I got there and, you know, I I grew up, I grew up Catholic Mm -hmm. and, you know, so I'm thinking to myself, man, oh man, I don't want to kneel. I don't want to get down on the pew. (laughs) I mean, after 17 surgeries, you could figure my body doesn't really feel good all the time. So I'm like, I'm like, so there were no pews. There were no, you know, I didn't know there was no kneeling and everything. Uh-huh. 
And I was just, I just had this, once again, it was kind of like the Eggman deal. Like I was, I was getting myself worked up, right? Yeah. Because I, I was thinking, okay, all right, pastor's going to see me and he is just going to throw fire and brimstone right at me. <laughs> Boom. Sinner, <laughs> sinner, you know. And it, 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 and it wasn't nothing like that. Mac and, and Julie awesome. and his family, they, they were really awesome. And it was, it was more, it was more of a, like of a conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. And I found myself from being, you know, kind of, tense and pensive to kind of leaning in and like, wow, this is, yeah, this is, this is, this is pretty cool. This is, yeah. Wow. And that started my, my journey. Yes. Back to leading my life the way I should. Yes. And, and, and Isn't that great? Thank you. <laughs> Michelle, and I, I I can't wait for you to meet her one day. She is a very strong woman, and she had to be. Um, and she, I mean, she's the one that, that, that put me in the right place for me to get back my life back on track again to what really matters. And I'm, you know, obviously I'm forever indebted just for what, that. What an amazing testimony of, of someone bringing you to church, of course, someone you love so much, and then you, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I believe you were telling me like how you knew about God, but then that personal relationship, that was the, that, was that, that, that yeah. trigger. Yeah, absolutely. That was, I, I wouldn't have been able to give you, I, I wouldn't be able to recite any kind of scripture whatsoever that first day. Yes, I knew there was, you know, like I said, I was raised Catholic in a, yeah. in a, in a God-fearing home, but I just, you know, all my brothers, all my brothers had to go to Catholic school and, you yeah. know, taught by the nuns and, mm -hmm hands pop with the rulers and all that. I, st I still hear it when, when, when I go home all the time about how, how rough they had it. But um, it, it was, yeah, it, it, was the, it, was the, it was the start of, of, of me and my journey yes. and, and realizing that there was a whole nother part to, to life that I was missing out on. And um, I'm not perfect. Nor am I. I nor no, is, no one's perfect. No, no one I, I here is perfect, Mark. No, no, I, no, no. I, I, I get that. I mean, my, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm still in my process. Yes. I'm, I'm getting there, but I spend, uh, you know, I spend a lot more time these days reading my Bible and, and, and uh, no. Excellent. Well, well Mark, so I know I, I would love to have a prayer for you, for your family. Wouldn't that be great? And just Man. for all of us, because... Man, we have some. That's funny you even bring that up because I, I, let me tell you about okay. one more little story about my wife. Oh, you, you, yeah, okay, go ahead, before, go ahead. before I leave today to, to fly up here, she goes, listen, you do not come back to this house and I will never forgive you if you are in a room with over 2,500 pastors <laughs> and you do not ask for them to pray for our family. Wow. So. Let's do it! If I, if I can please, if I can please have you put my family in your prayers, I will be able to go home tonight. We're going to And tell my wife, do it. I did it. Please let me in. <laughs> this guy's incredible, man. The Undertaker. And uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Mark, for Michelle, for their beautiful family. And I just pray for them, God, that you would surround them with your blessings, with your anointing, with your peace that surpasses all understanding. Give them wisdom and discernment and leadership as they continue to follow you because God, we know your footsteps are there and we're simply walking in them. So we pray for them. We pray that their family will be a light, a beacon, protect them, Hold them in the hollow of your hand, and we ask all these things in the name that's above every name, Jesus Christ, our living Lord. And everybody said, amen. The Undertaker! Mark, thank you. Thank you. That even hurt when he patted my back. Ah, well, Mark, listen, we have some worship leaders here, and I was just wondering, I wonder how far you could throw a worship leader. Would that be great? Sam, would you come up here? I, no, don't, don't, don't do it. We're not gonna do it, but Sam, come up here. Sam's a worship leader. This guy's my son-in-law. But Mark, seriously, if you had to, I'm not saying you're not gonna do it. 
How far could you throw him, you think? Uh, without a bounce? Just, just in the air? Yeah, in the air. I could probably get him to the third row. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Wouldn't that be a great game? The Undertaker tosses worship leaders. And we could put money on it and give the money to missions or something. Just an idea. C3 Global Pastor. Thank you again, man. Love you, love you, thank you, man. Yes, sir. The Undertaker!